you make a journey by train across the Kingdom of Denmark, you will travel over mild, low-lying farmland. But as you cross a bridge over an expanse of water, or travel along the coastline, you are reminded that the sea is never far away. Denmark is a group of islands set around the peninsula of Jutland. And the Danes will tell you that the water does not separate their islands, they say they are joined by the sea. For their Viking ancestors, the sea was always the easiest means of communication. And the modern Danes continue this tradition with the frequent ferry services that run between the islands. Whilst Falster and Zeeland are connected by the Storstrom Bridge, the longest in Europe. Most of Denmark is rich farmland, though, as we shall see, there are some differences between the East and the West, which are related to differences in soil and climate. During the Ice Age, Eastern Denmark was covered by a great ice sheet. Along its margins, meltwater streams washed out sands and gravels, and so in western Jutland, the soils are mainly sandy and relatively poor. Whilst in eastern Jutland and the islands, the soils are mainly fertile glacial clays which were deposited by the ice. Much of this fertile countryside is now arable farmland like Wilhelm Andersen's farm near Sora in Zealand. Mr. Andersen's farm covers 70 acres. He uses about a fifth of the land to grow root crops, such as fodder beet, and about half to grow barley, which is used for stock feed or sold for brewing. Although Denmark is usually regarded as a country of dairy farmers, Nearly half the total farm area is under grain crops. Mr. Anderson grows some winter wheat, but barley is by far the most important crop. The rest of the farm is under grass, which is used as cattle pasture. This is rotation grass, as the land is ploughed every year or two, and the crop grown in rotation with roots and grain. Like about three quarters of the dairy cattle in Denmark, Mr. Anderson's herd belongs to a breed called Danish Red. Their milk is made into butter and cheese at a nearby creamery. Almost every parish has a creamery. There are about 1,400 in the country altogether. And most are run by the farmers themselves as cooperatives. Unloading, the milk churns move into the dairy on a conveyor belt. As soon as the milk arrives inside, it is separated and pasteurized. At the same time, samples are taken to see that it is perfectly pure and that the butterfat content is sufficiently high. Although most of the milk is used for making butter, some dairies also produce cheese. This large vat contains the curd from which cheese is made. The skimmed milk and whey left over are sent back to the farms for feeding pigs. Farmer Anderson has 150 pigs. In addition to milk, he feeds them grain, potatoes, and beet. This breed of land-raised pigs has been specially developed to produce high-quality bacon for export. There are poultry on almost every farm in Denmark, 
and Mrs. Anderson helps her husband by feeding the chickens and collecting the eggs every day. White Leghorns like these are by far the most popular breed. <laughs> Top grade eggs are exported and today Denmark has become the second largest exporter in the world. The Andersons have three children, and one day their eldest son, Eric, will probably take over the farm. When he's old enough, he will go to the local agricultural college. This is one of some 30 in Denmark, where young farmers learn about animals and crops and how to keep accounts. They are told about the latest scientific methods of farming, and particularly how to use and look after farm machinery, for Danish farming is highly mechanized. Over three quarters of the farmers use tractors. Mechanization and the careful use of fertilizers and sprays have increased crop yields to some of the highest in Europe. On the sandy outwash soils of West Jutland, many of the farms are rather larger than the Andersons. A hundred years ago, most of this area was badly drained heath and moorland. Now the soils have been improved to make valuable farmland. Just outside Esbjerg is a large 250-acre holding belonging to farmer Brun. The sandy soils and damp climate of this part of Denmark are not ideally suited to grain crops, but some oats and barley are grown. Western Jutland is exposed to winds that sweep in from the North Sea, and Farmer Broon is happy in good years when his corn is still standing at harvest time. In another field, he grows a fodder crop called kohlrabi. This is the most common root crop in Denmark, and it is particularly well suited to the soils and climate of West Jutland. Many farmers here also grow potatoes in rotation with other roots and grain. Farmer Brun has 46 dairy cows, and like the Andersons, he keeps Danish reds. There are more cattle here in Jutland than on the islands, and the herds tend to be slightly larger. In spring, summer and autumn, the cows are out at pasture. And every morning and afternoon, the cowman, Mr. Brune's only permanent employee, brings them in for milking. Inside the stall, they are tied up and given a feed of kohlrabi. Today, nearly all the cattle in Denmark are milked by machine. As in other branches of agriculture, Mechanization means that fewer people are needed to work on the land, and so the cost of farm products is kept as low as possible. The standard of cleanliness is extremely high. After milking, all dairy machinery is carefully washed and sterilized. Denmark was the first country in the world to stamp out bovine tuberculosis, and the government carries on a continuous campaign against all animal diseases. Farmer Brun's main interest is in pig raising, and he sells about 400 bacon pigs every year. When they are six or seven months old, the animals are sent for slaughter at the local bacon factory. Like the creamery, this factory is also a cooperative owned by the local farmers and Mr. Brune is on the management committee. Inside the factory, some sides of bacon are packed in Hessian bags ready for export. But more and more of the meat is now exported direct in refrigerated vans like this one. The containers are sealed and will not be opened until they reach the end of their journey. Although most is exported as bacon, a good deal of pig meat is also cured as ham, 
or manufactured into luncheon meat or sausages. The cuts are separated in this modern butchery. In the canning department, 40,000 tins of luncheon meat are produced every day, mostly for export to the United States. At every stage, great care is taken to see that the highest standards of quality and hygiene are maintained. And in the factory laboratory, regular bacteriological counts are taken. The United Kingdom is by far the most important buyer of Danish pig products. And much of the farm produce destined for Britain is exported through the port of Esbjerg in western Jutland. From Esbjerg, there are regular sailings to Harwich. And every day, cartons of butter and sides of bacon are loaded on board ship. As well as being the second port after Copenhagen, Esbjerg has become Denmark's principal fishing port. The catch is varied and includes herring, sprats, cod and flatfish from the North Sea fisheries. Much of the fishing industry is also run on a cooperative basis. Every day, the skipper-owned boats leave for the fishing grounds of the North Sea and the Skagerrak. The crew, who are paid with a share in the catch, also share some of the costs, according to rules based on traditional practice. Copenhagen, the fine capital city with more than one and a quarter million inhabitants, accounts for nearly a quarter of the population of Denmark. As well as being the seat of government and busiest port in Scandinavia, Copenhagen is a centre of industry. The first diesel-powered ship was launched here in 1912, and shipbuilding is still a major activity. In this shipyard, some of the world's largest diesel engines are made. Since the end of the Second World War, the number of people employed in industry has risen by more than half. At this modern factory in Copenhagen, pharmaceutical chemicals are made. In carefully controlled conditions, these girls are helping to produce antibiotics, such as penicillin and streptomycin. Another part of the factory specializes in making insulin from the pancreatic glands of animals, particularly pigs. In recent years, specialized electrical engineering products have also been developed. This factory, producing sound measuring equipment, exports over 90% of its products. Danish furniture, too, has earned a high reputation for good design and high quality. Denmark has very few raw materials on which to base her industries. Important exceptions, however, are the easily accessible deposits of chalk and clay which are used in cement factories. This industry is able to supply all Denmark's needs and considerable quantities of cement are sold overseas. It is led, too, to the production of specialized machinery and complete cement works which Danish engineers have built in many parts of the world. Industrial exports now total rather more than half the goods which Denmark sells every year. Nevertheless, the backbone of the economy is still agricultural produce, such as bacon, butter and eggs, from the many farms like the Bruins and the Andersons.